So for us at Maple State, the idea was that we thought the nature trail um, would be a great opportunity not only to provide something for the community, but also we thought, you know, we have an outdoor classroom, right? And right. you remember back when they used to have it when we would go to school, um, everybody we kind of talked to, this is one of the highlights that we exactly. come down here. So anyways, the nice thing about the nature trail is, is that uh, if you don't maintain it, the worst thing that happens is that nature continues to thrive. So it's still a very good area to have right. a trail. But um, the main thing we need right now is we need to make sure that if we do this trail, before we even get started, that we have it be accessible for um, handicapped students and handicapped people. And also that it's able to handle classrooms being brought down here, students being brought down here, so that we can have a, a bathroom, right? That's something we kind of talk about. Okay. Yep. So, Anyways, those are kind of the things we need to handle and then also make sure the infrastructure can handle buses. So, so one of the things we definitely would need to do if this project is to happen is we need to have a parking lot. We'd like to have it behind us um, and have it be large enough for a bus to fully turn around without backing up because if you're a bus driver, you're not supposed to be backing up. It's not safe. But some other things we'd have to do is we also have to make sure because um, the question we get asked a lot is how are we going to handle it if it floods? That was the main reason why it stopped right. in 97. And the big deal would be to um, make sure that we don't have to do much cleanup. We want to be able to allow this land to drain if it was to flood. And if you come down here and look, we kind of have a natural dike built around it. So there would be a little bit of um, earth moving to make sure that the parking lot was high and that it would head proper drainage and then we repair that because we kind of have a grassland that we'd like to keep over here for the nature trail. We'd also like to put the bathroom over here and that's kind of where the park board comes in right with protecting the bathroom. Right and, and just kind of the general maintenance keeping right. that up uh, we've got the staff for that so mm -hmm. be something extra to add and definitely beneficial to the, to the nature trail. Right. And the park board, you guys said you had a pretty good idea on how to protect it from ice flows, right? Yep, yep, we do. We have a lot of uh, a lot of areas we do have to protect, uh, being close to the river with uh, Rainbow Garden, with um, the campground and Island Park itself, too. So um, we do a lot of that stuff uh, mm -hmm. regularly. <laughs> and the, the envision for the um, science club is to help assist, but then once it's ready and up and running, it would be completely a park board. Right, yeah. Property and trail, right? Yes, yep. correct. And we'd be just volunteers that would help seasonally. Yep. So one of the ideas would be in areas like this, when we want it to be handicap accessible, would be we'd have to, with the slope coming down and then going back up again, um, certain areas are going to need bridges to cross, especially in the back of the nature trail. And they used to have areas like that <coughs> in the original trail. But we'd also have to look here at making sure that we have surfaces where you can actually a ramp or something like that where you can actually push a wheelchair up. The issue here is that you could try to change the grade a little bit, but then you're talking about tearing up dirt and that right. may not be the best way to go about it. So the ideas we've kind of floated around right now would be things about um, basically putting in maybe um, wood planks, building a solid wood platform that isn't as much a bridge as it is just a stable footing that isn't going to degrade in the year. So, be a metal ramp, metal platform, stuff like that is what we're looking at. So, one of the cool parts about the trail is we've actually been able to talk to quite a few people who have um, been a part of making the original trail and they're still in the community. And we even got um, from somebody who was part of making the original trail, we got one of the little pamphlet or brochures that they would give people when they came down here. So the trail actually came up through this way and it was, came uh, back this direction and it was three quarters of a mile long and we're, gonna, we're planning on following, if the project actually can occur, we would like to follow that same trail and we would like to use the things that they have marked on the trail to show the difference from back in the 70s and early 80s to now. So whereas the trail might have pointed out a young ash tree, now we can take more samples and actually show you how much that tree has changed in age, you know, in time. So that's kind of one of the cool parts about being able to do this project again uh, years later is we can actually see that. Um, the other thing is, is that you can see from the um, understory here, and the weeds, everything is pretty much stopped and it's because of the canopy of the trees. And so as far as making the trail, once we get past the grass, um, it would pretty much be moving small trees and dead branches and limbs, and I don't think it would take an excessive amount of work once we get into this area 
to start marking out and making our tree. Some of the ideas, if we're able to do this project, if we get the funding we need, we would like to make certain displays um, for certain areas and parts of the trail. So like around here, we will take tree bore samples so that students can actually see and visitors of the trail can see the age of the tree so you can see what the bore sample looks like. We have the oldest oak tree actually lives in North Dakota, it happens to be between Naval and Portland. We would like to take a circumference of that tree, make a, a similar circumference out of a ribbon of metal, and put it around the oldest tree we can find here just to show you how much bigger that oak tree is compared to the oak trees here. And displays like that, we're hoping that if people are interested and really feel connected to this project, that they might be able to sponsor a display for a loved one or themselves, um, and we'd be able to put up a plaque or something to show a display like that. So, we'd have to work with the park board though on how to handle funding and things like that. So uh, one of the other ideas, you know, when we, we talk about potential for this, one of the things we love is that since it's been untouched, you can see everything from the growth of the larger trees down to the decompositions of the ones that have fallen over. So now you can make displays out of the decomp areas, you can make displays out of the age of the trees, you can do soil samples would be another idea that we'd love if the funding was there for ideal projects like that. Um, and one of the ideas would be even, you'll see a lot of animal life, especially deer when you get down here. And if we did a seclusion area, where we had a fence to keep deer out of a small portion. You could see what kind of saplings would start growing inside that fenced off area that aren't growing on the outside. And so you could see the effect, the students and, and members of the community could see what kind of effects deer have on oak trees. Because I mean, every oak tree drops tons and tons of acorns, but you don't see oak saplings very often. Right. And so the, you know, we would like to see what, if any effect comes from exclusion to areas like that. So we want it to be more than just a trail, we want it to be kind of an educational experience with, with signage, things like that, um, possible access to the river. I mean, these would be all kind of different ideas that if we are able to do the project would be things we'd like to follow through on. So we thought this is a nice area to possibly put things where people could come down, they could sit, they could look at the water, they could, um, the water, the river watch group from the high school could right. come down here and take their water samples would be another idea. So we want to incorporate the water as part of the nature trail. We don't want it to be just the edge of the nature trail, we want it to be something we can use uh, as an educational tool or just something that's nice to observe. And then a night like tonight, it's about perfect to be down here and exactly. just walking around and looking. So We see that there's still a ton of potential. There might even be more potential for this trail than there was in the past. So we're really excited about it. But um, right now, the main thing we're looking we've, we've with the fundraising is we need to find um, some guaranteed funds. We've been able to have some commitments from certain groups, which is very appreciated but they are also matching funds and things like that. So our fundraising, we are nowhere near done yet, but um, we feel that the first thing we have to do before we break any ground on this trail is we have to make sure we have enough funding to take care of both the handicap accessibility, the parking lot and the bathrooms. Right. And then once we get done with that, then the fun part we feel it comes where we can really start to work on the trail right. itself mm -hmm. and so we want it to be something um you know we have the flower garden or what's that called the rainbow garden, garden. rainbow garden yeah and that's a, a real feather in the cap i think for the community and it'd be nice to have something that kind of goes hand in hand with that and that's right. what we hope this can be right so. Well, the Mayville Park District is full on board with this project. We think it's great, uh, an opportunity to beautify your community and, and bring other people in to this community. So we think that's great. We are taking care of the funds for this project and, and handling those. So if, if you feel so inclined to donate, please send your, do your donations to Mayville Park District, PO Box 315 in Mayville. Uh, we thank you for any contributions we get. Yeah, we appreciate the support. Yeah.